exposed to your Son in the mouth of the blood who first to suffer for you, and as the God of the glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find in none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humanity. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from chapter 50 of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given to me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear. I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like print, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Psalm 31 is found in the bulletin. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trial. My eyes are consumed with sorrow, but also my throat and my head. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the one who has called all my enemies, and many of my neighbors, and the dismay of those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they will leave me. I am forgotten by the dead man. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, 
taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being formed in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him to give him a name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The king of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has determined to sift you all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you will know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, the scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief, and he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you were betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police and the elders who had come for him. Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. 
A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting. Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod and the soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put on an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is perverting the people. And here, I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release his rabbis for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. 
for the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But others rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, Praise God, he said. Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock hewn tomb where no one had ever laid before. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was coming. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed. They saw the tomb how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ornaments. On the Sabbath day they rested, according to the command. <laughs> Palm Sunday in its strangeness sets the tone for this week to come. We start with triumph and fun and palm fronds and music, then we rapidly shift to the solemn reading of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. No one enters into Holy Week without knowing what will happen on Friday. Palm Sunday also brings us back to earth and brings us back to what it's treated as the gospel and what truly is the gospel. So often the gospel gets treated as a bunch of spiritual ideas and concepts. The gospel is not a floating mass of ideas and feelings. The gospel is not a collection of the spiritual sayings of Jesus. The gospel is not a manual for how to live a happy life. 
No, the gospel is the ongoing walk with Jesus Christ, who was crucified and is risen. It is a walk that encompasses our moments of triumph and celebration and our failures and weaknesses. It is a walk we each take separately. It is a walk we take together. It is a walk we do with the whole creation. The gospel is our way of life. The gospel is our story. Palm Sunday reminds us again that we're part of the story, even as we are separated in time and space from the events. We put ourselves in the crowd to welcome Jesus. We put ourselves in the crowd to condemn Jesus. We celebrate Jesus in the gospel, and we deny Jesus in the gospel, and we even betray Jesus and the gospel. Palm Sunday sweeps us all together, the righteous and the sinners, each of us being at least a little of both. It sweeps the cosmos together in miniature, the lowly and the high, the powerful and the poor, the pious and the scandalous, all together. And even if these were silent, then the stones on the earth would shout out to God in seeing the procession of Christ into Jerusalem, and the dark sky would mourn the death of Jesus on the cross. Palm Sunday reveals much to us. On this day, Jesus processes into Jerusalem, the city of peace, the holy city, the subjugated city, the throne of David, now a mere possession in the hand of the empire of Rome and its emperor. Jesus Christ processes into Jerusalem. He is not a king like Herod, not a governor like Pontius Pilate, and absolutely not like the Roman emperor who styles himself a Roman god in the comforts of his palace funded by oppression. No, Jesus is true Lord, true human, true God and he processes into Jerusalem on a borrowed colt. Jesus Christ processes into Jerusalem. He is a working-class carpenter, yet his words astound, for they come from a powerful spring of ageless wisdom. He heals the sick, casts out demonic forces, absolves sins, feeds the hungry, and teaches all who will listen. The religious authorities wonder, who is he? Is he the Messiah? They talk amongst one another and argue and fight. He couldn't be the Messiah. He can't be the Messiah. He shouldn't be the Messiah. No, what he should be is dead. Jesus Christ processes into Jerusalem and his mere presence is enough to upset the whole thing. His mere presence brings to light all these things that remain hidden. The city is in an uproar, not just Jerusalem, but everything, the whole world. And in its uproar is its judgment. The political system is judged. Have we done what is good and right? Have we cared for our common life? Or have we propped up our own power and profit at the expense of humanity? Have we become like a Roman emperor who fancied himself a god whom all must obey? The religious system is judged. Do we who spend our time in prayer and service have the ability to recognize the work of God in our very midst? Or would we foolishly sacrifice our own God for safety, comfort, and power? Jesus Christ processes into Jerusalem the rightful sovereign, the Holy One, a king who does not lord it over others, and a lord who refuses kingly pomp and pride a priest who teaches rightly, and a teacher whose own sacrifice of blood, his own blood, gives life to the whole creation. Jesus Christ, the name above every name, the glorious one who loves us, he is put to death. The religious cannot recognize the divine, and so it condemns God and hands him over to the governor. The political cannot recognize goodness, and so it condemns God to death on a cross. On the cross, Jesus Christ is condemned to death. And on the cross, 
Jesus Christ condemns no one. On the cross, the world is judged, but it is not condemned. The world is revealed for all that it does, but it is not condemned. On the cross, the world is loved. Christ, who is love, loves endlessly. Christ stretches out his arms of love on the hardwood of the cross to embrace the whole world. Those who condemn him, those who betray him, those who deny him, those who stumble and fail, those whose hearts have grown cold, those who mourn, those who suffer, those who are oppressed, those who commit atrocities, those who do not know him. And Christ embraces all the world, the animals, the air, the waters, the land, the emptiness of the universe. Even the stones that would have shouted for joy at his presence, and the skies that darkened in mourning for his death, they too are embraced in the arms of Christ on the cross. Will we who join Jesus in his procession into Jerusalem also follow him to the cross, to the tomb, to the resurrection? Not just in Holy Week, but the rest of our lives. For the gospel is our story. The gospel is our life. Amen. Rest in peace and rise in glory. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. In your bulletin at the very end you have all the Holy Week services so please mark them and come to them uh, the Holy Week liturgies have so much power and resonance and I they do things that the spoken word cannot so um, if you have your envelopes for lessening the loan and Lent the purple ones you may hand them in today if you would like. But we'll take them anytime because, you know, we'll take it. Um, and a brief thing because the passion narrative is enough for most of this. Um, next Sunday, we're going to be bringing back the Easter egg hunt and the flowering of the cross. So if you can bring in some pre wrapped candies this week, the youth will put them into the eggs uh, before the vigil. So if you drop them off into the parish office before one on Friday, um, preferably peanut-free stuff just because of allergies. That's a pretty common one. Um, so we can get that done. And then they will hide them on Easter morning. And then flowers, if you want to bring some flowers um, before the service uh, on Easter, um, so that way they're fresh. Because if they're left around here, they might not get watered enough. And no one wants to put less pleasant flowers in there. Um, and then we will decorate that. And so um, we'll have coffee hour after today. Next Sunday, I assume a lot of people will have brunch plans, so we have to-go options for next Sunday. But today, you should have a snack. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful to you, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of you. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is the Lord We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in you. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the rest of the For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
of God or the people of God.
It's a moment of privilege. I didn't introduce Del. Del Hardison, our guest musician for today. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for giving us the spiritual fruit of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, since us to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us bow down to the Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.